in the previous lecture we have discussed three four vectors and those three four vectors were velocity four vector momentum four vector and the acceleration four vector now today we are going to discuss a very important four vector and this is actually four force or you can say minoski force in fact uh, in this lecture we will see the minoski equation uh, for uh, minoski force equation which is also called the covariant four vector form of equation of mechanics okay uh, in fact uh, this equation uh, is the basic equation of mechanics and uh, you will see that uh, this equation will represent not only the equation of motion but also the energy conservation principle okay in fact uh, in relativistic mechanics the concept of force is not uh, as in uh, newtonian mechanics it is something different because the concept of force uh, has no uh, longer any absolute meaning in this relativistic mechanics as it 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 has a particular meaning in the newtonian mechanics because you know in newtonian mechanics in two reference frames uh, <coughs> moving with each other uh, relative to each other with constant velocity the force remains same that is the magnitude of the force and the direction of force remain same in any two inertial frames but here you will see later on uh, after the discussion of this four force that uh, in relativistic mechanics if we will find the magnitude and direction of uh, same force in two inertial frames which are in relative motion with respect to one another with constant velocity then the magnitude and direction of the force will be not same in the two reference frames that's why we simply say that the concept of force has no longer any absolute meaning as it has the uh, at uh, in the newtonian mechanics because <coughs> so this is a very important concept and you should uh, uh, watch this video very seriously and i hope when you will watch the video seriously each and every aspect of this lecture will be in your mind when the lecture will be finished first of all uh, in this uh, lecture we will see what are the four components of a four force or minoski force in fact we will find the four components in terms of momentum four vector and also in terms of acceleration four vector okay so first of all we are going to see uh, what will be the four components of four force in terms of momentum four vector you can see it here in this first heading uh, this is our aim okay now uh, the four force is also defined in the same way as in newtonian mechanics because you know according to newton's second law of motion the force is simply the rate of change in linear momentum okay f equal to dp dt so similarly if you represent the four force by the symbol f mu then in relativistic mechanics too uh, this four force is defined like this f mu equal to dp mu by d tau remember this tau is actually the proper time okay and p mu is the four momentum vector okay now you have uh, discussed this four momentum vector earlier uh, in the previous video and you can see this p mu is defined as m not times u mu where u mu you know this is velocity four vector so f mu can be defined as d d tau operated on m not u mu okay 
Now since this uh, rest mass m0 is a constant factor independent of this tau, so this will be outside of the operator and the result will be m0 du mu by d tau. Okay? Again you know that this uh, u mu which is actually the velocity for vector, this is defined as dx mu by d tau. Okay? Where x mu is what? Can you say? You have studied it in very detail while uh, disc, uh, discussing the Lorentz transformation that this x mu is nothing. This is simply the four position vector or four radius vector. Okay? So, the time derivative of four radius vector is four velocity vector. So, in a state of uh, u mu, you can write dx mu by d tau and when you will write it, then our result will be f mu equal to m naught times d2 x mu by dt d tau square. In fact, this equation uh, which I have defined just now, this is just similar to the Newton's equation of motion and uh, this equation is actually called Minowski 4 equation and as I have told you earlier, that this equation is called the covariant four vector form of the equation of mechanics. This is called covariant form of uh, equation, covariant four vector form of the equation of mechanics. Okay. You will see, uh, you can see that here this index mu runs from 1 to 4, you know. This is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So actually this single equation is not only one equation but it represents four equations for the values of mu 1, 2, 3 and 4. Actually the first three equations that is equation for f1, f2 and f3 uh, represents the equation of motion just as in Newtonian mechanics. But the fourth equation for f4 which will be actually equal to f4 equal to m0 du4 by d tau that represents actually the theorem of conservation of energy. Okay. You will see this fact later on. Okay. Now you know that uh, this uh, proper time tau is related to the dilated time uh, in this manner. This is t equal to tau divided by root over 1 minus u square by c square. Okay. So, uh, taking this fact under account, uh, we can see what will be the classical result for this uh, four, 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 four force. As you know, in classical limit, u is much smaller than c. This is called classical limit or Newtonian limit. And when u is much smaller than c, you know u square over c square will be much smaller than 1. So in this condition, in this denominator, we can neglect u square over c square in comparison to 1. And when it will be neglected, you can see this t will be simply equal to tau. t will be equal to tau. So, if you are talking uh, in, uh, in under the limit of classical limit, then what will be the expression for force? In fact, in that condition, we denote this force vector by Fk and Fk will be equal to dPk by dt. In fact, in this condition, in classical limit, this k will be equal to only 1, 2 and 3. You cannot talk about the four-dimensional space in classical physics. Okay. And uh, again, this pk will be equal to m0 uk. m0 is a constant factor. And so, this will be m0 duk by dt. Tau has been replaced by t because you know in classical limit, this tau and this t both are equal. Okay. So, fk will be now equal to m0 d2 xk by dt square because you know that uk is equal to dxk by dt. 
okay in fact uh, this equation 2 is the classical newtonian equation of motion and it gives the three uh, dimensional components of force vector so i have told you that uh, this equation 2 represents only three equations not four equations here fourth component is not present okay now our aim is to find the four components of the four force vector as you know if we consider that uh, f1 f2 f3 and f4 are the four components of four force then the four force f mu will be represented like this uh, we write simply inside this bracket f1 f2 f3 f4 with commas okay or in a state of this f4 you can also write ift okay in fact this first three components f1 f2 f3 represents the force vector f in 3d space and this ft represents the uh, ift represents the fourth component okay now uh, our aim is to find all these components so let us uh, calculate uh, all these components one by one you know this f1 which is the first component of four force this will be defined by dp1 by d tau okay now this can be written as dp1 by dt times dt by d tau okay now this p1 is simply px so dp1 by dt can be written as dpx by dt and you have learnt in the previous lecture that this dt by d tau is simply equal to this 1 over root over 1 minus u square by c square which is actually called Lorentz factor gamma okay now uh, according to Newton's second law of motion this dpx by dt is simply equal to fx so instead of dpx by dt I have written here fx so f1 is equal to fx over root over 1 minus u square by c square to the power half you can equivalently write it uh, this is simply gamma times fx you can write it because this gamma is uh, which is called Lorentz factor this is 1 over root over 1 minus u square by c square now in the similar manner you can easily write the expression for the second and the third component of the four force vector when you will write f2 in a stead of fx we will write fy and other factor will be remain same so this is f2 is fy divided by root over 1 minus u square by c square and equivalently you may write it this is gamma fy okay and similarly the third component is fz over root over 1 minus u square by c square and this can be written as gamma times fz where gamma you know is equal to what this gamma is equal to 1 over root over 1 minus u square over c square and this is called Lorentz factor okay in fact uh, all these three components f1 f2 and f3 this represents the three dimensional velocity vector v which is actually equal to fx i plus fy j plus fz k okay now we will see what will be the fourth component of uh, this uh, uh, four force so f4 in the similar manner you can define by the equation dp4 by d tau okay and again this can be written as dp4 by dt times dt by d tau now you know uh, what is the expression for p4 you have learnt it in the previous lecture so remember the concept of previous lecture d this p4 is equal to ie divided by c you are remembering or not you have studied it in the previous lecture so you must remember and so this will be d dt i e over c and again this dt by d tau uh, you know this is 1 over root over 1 minus u square by c square okay 
now this uh, i over c is a constant factor so it will be outside of the operator and instead of 1 by root over 1 minus u square by c square i have written here gamma you can see okay and this operator d dt will be operated on e so f4 which is fourth component of the four force can be written as i gamma over c times de by dt okay so in this way you have obtained the four components of uh, four force now you can write uh, the expression for the four force in this manner you know f mu is defined like this and instead of f1 you will write fx over root over 1 minus u square by c square instead of fy you can write fy by root over 1 minus u square by c square and for f3 we write fz over 1 minus u square by c square's root and f4 you have just obtained this is i gamma over c times de by dt okay now as i have told you earlier that this fx fy and fz these are actually the x y and z components of a three dimensional uh, force vector so instead of this this expression can be written in compact manner like this f mu equal to f vector f which is three dimensional force vector uh, divided by root over 1 minus u square by c square and the fourth component is this much i gamma over c times de by dt so this equation 4 defines the four force or the minoski force in terms of the momentum four vector okay now we will uh, again find uh, the four force or the components of four force in terms of the acceleration four vector okay so again I start from the same definition you know f mu is equal to dp mu by d tau and p mu is m naught into u mu mass into velocity so this will be d d tau operated on m naught u mu again m naught is a constant factor it will be outside of the operator so this result is m naught times d u mu by d tau now you know this d u mu by d tau this is acceleration four vector so uh, instead of d u mu by d tau we write here a mu this is acceleration four vector okay so uh, if you want to find the four components of this f mu you have to simply multiply by this factor m naught to the four components of acceleration four vector and in the previous lecture you have seen what are the four components of acceleration four vector so remembering that result you can now easily write what will be the expression for the uh, four force okay i have written here but this result you have uh, learnt in the previous lecture so you must remember it you know that a mu which is actually four acceleration vector this was defined like this this is equal to a over one minus u square by c square plus u times u dot a sorry this is vector u and this is vector a okay and divided by c square times 1 minus u square by c square whole square okay and the fourth component is i times u dot a divided by c times 1 minus u square by c square c square root i have written this four acceleration vector here directly because you have learnt this in the previous lecture so definitely you have to write down this expression for four acceleration vector directly here now you can see the four force is defined in this equation 5 f mu is equal to 
m not times a mu and you have defined a mu so simply when you will multiply the expression for a mu by m not then you will get the expression for four force this is a very simple uh, concept so you can see f mu will be what simply we will multiply this equation by m not okay m not this equation will be multiplied by m not so what will be that you can see the first term is a over this much so this will be m not a by 1 minus u square by c square second term this is second term of for a mu this will be uh, now m not u times u dot a over c square times 1 minus u square by c square whole square and the fourth component is i times uh, u dot a by this much so again multiply by m naught to this fourth term so this will be i m naught uh, u dot a over c times 1 minus u square by c square whole square okay so this is actually the expression for the four force or minowski force in terms of acceleration four vector okay now you have defined this four force in two manners first one was in terms of the momentum four vector and here in this equation 6 this four force has been defined in terms of the acceleration four vector but we have defined the same thing in two manners okay so actually when uh, these two forces are same so they are definitely the space part of uh, equation uh, number 5 that is which defines uh, this sorry not 5 but equation number 4 in equation 4 f mu has been defined you can see the first term inside the bracket f divided by 1 minus u square by c square to the power half this is actually the space part of this four force vector okay and i gamma by c de by dt this is its time part okay or imaginary part you can see similarly uh, in this equation number six the the sum of these two first two terms this represents the space part of f mu and this uh, for, uh, this component that is the fourth component represents the time part of the four force since uh, f mu is same so definitely the space part of equation 4 and the space part of equation 6 will be same similarly the time part of equation 4 and the time part of equation 6 will be also same this is uh, just uh, like this concept that when two complexes are equal let us say a plus ib is equal to c plus id then you know that real part a will be equal to the real part b and the imaginary part b is equal to the imaginary part d this is same thing so now let us equate the space part of these two equations you can see the space part of this equation 4 is this much this is f over root over 1 minus u square by c square and the space part of this equation 6 is the sum of these two first terms so we will equate it because this these two will be is same so i have equated it here you can see this is f over root over 1 minus u square by c square and uh, this is m not a by 1 minus u square by c square and plus m not u times u dot a divided by c square times 1 minus u square by c square whole square now you can see we can take uh, this 1 minus u square by c square as a common factor in rhs and that will cancel out and so in lhs there will be simply f and in the first term in the stead of this 1 minus u square by c square now 
it will be a square root of 1 minus u square by c square because a square root of 1 minus u square by c square has been cancelled out. And uh, here in the second term as a root over 1 minus u square by c square has been cancelled out so the power will now become 3 by 2. So you can see our result will be f equal to m naught a divided by root over 1 minus u square by c square plus m naught u times u dot a over c square times 1 minus u square by c square to the power 3 by 2. Okay. So in this way uh, uh, we have expressed this uh, uh, space part of the force which is actually the three dimensional force. So this three dimensional force is expressed as in this equation 7. Now we will see that this uh, three dimensional force when defined in Newtonian mechanics uh, the form of this equation will be different and how you can say that this force f which is the force of force vector of three dimensional space uh, and this equation represents the equation which is different from Newtonian equation of motion you can check it. Let us see here as you know that m naught over uh, root over 1 minus u square by c square is equal to m. This is actually the relativistic mass. So, instead of this m naught over root over 1 minus u square by c square, we will write m. So, see the first term in this equation and a is at each. So, f is equal to m a plus. Now, again here this m naught over root over 1 minus u square by c square will be written as m and uh, u times u dot a over c square since 1 of the 1 minus u square by c square s square root you have associated with this m so the remaining factor is 1 minus u square by c square okay now f is equal to m a a plus now here uh, <coughs> this will be m u times u dot a and divided by c square. Now let us take LCM here. This will be LCM will be c square and this is c square minus u square. Now this c square and this c square will cancel out and f is equal to m a plus m u times u dot a over c square minus u square. You can see this equation. In Newtonian mechanics you know f is simply equal to m a okay but here in relativistic mechanics you can see that f is not equal to m a f is not equal to m a in general because according to this equation 8 you can see f is equal to m a plus this much okay plus this much so this equation is somewhat different uh, uh, from the equation which exists in the Newtonian mechanics. Okay, So I have mentioned it here you can see f equal to dp by dt is the 3D force vector but just you have uh, seen that this f is not equal to ma so you can say that this formula for f differs from the Newtonian formula because in Newtonian mechanics f is simply equal to m times a and that's why we can say that uh, in Newtonian mechanics since f is equal to a so this result implies that f is always sorry f will be always parallel to a you can see f equal to m a and that's why since you know that this m is a positive scalar and if it is a positive scalar f will be in the direction of a okay in Newtonian mechanics but according to this equation you can see since f is equal to m a plus this much so in this case you cannot say that force is always in the direction of acceleration between the acceleration and the velocity vector what is the angle that determines the direction of force because here you know in second term the, the direction will be determined by this velocity vector u so in relativistic mechanics 
द फोर्स डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स इज डिटर्मिंड बाय द एंगल बिटवीन द एक्सीलरेशन वेक्टर एंड द वेलोसिटी वेक्टर एक्सीलरेशन वेक्टर एंड वेलोसिटी वेक्टर सो यू कैन नॉट से दैट एफ इज पैरल टू ए इन रिलेटिविस्टिक मैकेनिक्स यू कैन नॉट से रिलेटिविस्टिक इन रिलेटिविस्टिक मैकेनिक्स एंगल बिटवीन एफ एंड ए विल हैव एनी वैल्यू बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन एट्टी दिस इज वेरी रिमार्केबल फैक्ट ओके नाउ टिल नाउ यू हैव डिस्कस्ड एंड फाइंड द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ फोर फोर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द एक्सीलरेशन फोर वेक्टर एंड द मोमेंटम फोर वेक्टर now we are going to see a very important concept and in this concept we will see how this four force is expressed in terms of power in terms of power you know power is defined as work done per second it means this is dw by dt okay and dw by dt this is in fact uh, when you say dw what does it mean this is just elementary work and uh, this elementary work will be equal to what this is defined by f dot dr so this will be f dot dr by dt and you know this uh, dr by dt is velocity u so power is simply defined by f dot u okay so now let us find the expression for this power power p as you have seen this is defined by f dot u and uh, just now we have obtained the expression for f in relativistic mechanics you can see this expression here in equation 8 f is defined sorry Uh, we will use this equation uh, which is defined in equation number 7 this is actually um, in terms of m but our aim is to find this expression in terms of m not okay so let us use uh, the expression for f which is defined in equation 7 here so i have written it here you can see this is the expression for f which have been defined in equation 7 i have mentioned it here you can see So instead of f, we have written m not a divided by root over one minus u square by c square plus m not u times u dot a over c square times one uh, minus u square by c square to the power three by two and uh, dot u. So I have written here dot u. Okay. Now take the uh, scalar product of these two terms inside this square bracket with u. So you can see. after taking the scalar product the first term will be what this will be m not times u dot a over 1 minus u square by c square to the power half and in second term since vector is u so this will be m not u dot u times u dot a over c square times 1 minus u square by c square to the power 3 by 2 okay now we will simplify this result a little bit you can see in fact uh, this m not times u dot a over 1 minus u square by c square to the power half which is actually this first term this has been taken as a common factor when you will take it as a common factor you can see what will remain in the second term in the second term there will be only Uh, in fact uh, this u dot u divided by c square times 1 minus u square by c square okay so you can see i have written here that this is 1 plus u square u square means u dot u this is equal to u square because you know the square of any geometrical vector or three dimensional vector is simply its a scalar product with itself a dot a is a square b dot b is b square in case of three dimensional vector but when you are to, when you talk about the four dimensional vector that is four vector then you take a, a square of the modulus okay 
Now, uh, <coughs> see this. This factor outside of the bracket has been written at each. Now, let us simplify the uh, term inside this square bracket. We simply multiply by this c square to the terms inside the bracket. And what will be that? That will be 1 plus u square by c square minus u square. Now, take the LCM. LCM will be c square minus u square. And so, this will be c square minus u square plus u square. And the outer factor remains uh, at each. So, I am not talking about that. And you can see this u square and this u square will cancel out. So, the term inside the square bracket is now this. This is c square by c square times 1 minus u square by c square. Actually, I have taken this c square in the denominator as a common factor. So, this will be c square times 1 minus u square by c square. Now, this c square and this c square will cancel out. And uh, what will be your result? You can see m naught times u dot a divided by 1 minus u square by c square square root at times 1 minus u square by c square. So, there will be uh, in denominator, there will be 1 minus u square by c square to the power 3 by 2. Okay. So, f dot u which represents actually the power, this is given as m naught times u dot a divided by this much. This is 1 minus u square by c square to the power 3 by 2. I hope you have understand. Okay. But, uh, uh, when you have defined the four force in this equation six, six uh, in equation number six, see here. In uh, four force, this fourth component of the four force defined in equation six is what? This is I m naught u dot a divided by c into one minus u square by c square whole square. In fact, uh, we will substitute the value of f dot u in this fourth component. Okay, So, see the form of this fourth component and uh, uh, use the expression for this power that is f dot u here. You can see f4 is like this. I have just repeated that expression here. f4 is i m naught divided uh, times u dot a over c times 1 minus u square by c square whole square. Okay? And this can be written like this. i over 1 minus u square by c square to the power half times m naught times u dot a over c into, uh, c into 1 minus u square by c square to the power 3 by 2. We can write it. Now, See this factor. This factor is nothing. This is simply the power that is f dot u as you have can see this equation 9. So, instead of this uh, second factor in this equation, we can write f dot u. Okay? f dot u. And again, 1 over root over 1 minus u square by c square, this is equal to gamma. So, you can write this f4 as i gamma by c, this c is here, times f dot u. So, the fourth component of the four force has been expressed here in terms of power. This f dot u is nothing. This is simply the power. Okay? This is power. Now, as I have told you earlier that we have uh, actually uh, found the expression for the four force in two forms. First one was in terms uh, of acceleration for vector. The second was in terms of the momentum for vector. And as I have told you that we have defined the same thing in two manners. So definitely the space part of two equations are same and similarly the time part are also same. So now we will equate the time part of the four force which have defined in equation 4 and in equation 6. So, see again uh, you can see here. 
this is your expression for the four force defined in equation 4 and this is its time part this time part is i gamma divided by de by dt okay and let us see uh, what is the uh, time part of this four force in equation 6 and you have obtained this value in terms of the power so instead of this we will write the expression and this expression was in fact i gamma divided by c times f dot u you have just obtained it so now we will equate these two uh, fourth components okay see here i have equated it this is i gamma over c de by dt and this is i gamma by c f dot u now this i gamma over c and i gamma over c will cancel out and de by dt will be equal to f dot u okay so this de by dt is equal to what this is f dot u and this is a well known theorem of uh, classical mechanics you know that rate of change is energy is equal to power and it actually represents the principle of conservation of energy because when work is done that work done is, appears in the form of energy so work done per second which is power or the rate of change in energy which is power definitely that will e equal to the power generated okay and that's why we simply say that this fourth component of the four force represents the conservation of energy principle okay i have mentioned it here you can see the rate of change of energy of a particle is equal to power this is energy conservation principle okay so fourth part represents the conservation principle as i have told you earlier i i will uh, repeat the same thing just now you can see now now we can express the four force in terms of the in terms of power as you have seen that uh, the three first components of four force in terms of momentum vector you have written this is f over root over 1 minus u square by c square you can see the uh, equation number 4 here uh, just uh, you can see this is the first three components instead of this first three component for fx fy fz i have written it and for the this fourth component you have obtained uh, what will be the value of the fourth component so place that value here so this is the first three component and the fourth component in terms of power can be written as i gamma over c f dot u okay and in other words you can say that this expression can be also be written like this instead of gamma we will now write one over root over 1 minus u square by c square so four force in terms of power is defined like this f mu equal to f over root over 1 minus u square by c square comma i f dot u which is power over c times root over 1 minus u square by c square okay so in this way we have obtained uh, the components of the four force uh, in three forms first of all we have seen the components in terms of momentum four vector then you have seen the components in terms of the acceleration four vector now you have seen the uh, components in terms of the power actually the fourth component is expressed in terms of power okay as uh, we have started our lecture today uh, from the minoski force equation and you have seen that uh, that equation was f mu equal to dp mu by d tau and this is uh, written as this page has been turned because time is something greater than my device is uh, gets stopped so let us see here instead of p mu you can write 
एम नॉट यू म्यू एंड सो दिस इज एम नॉट डी यू म्यू बाय डी टो हियर म्यू इज इक्वल टू वन टू थ्री एंड फोर एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग ऑफ दिस लेक्चर दैट दीज आर एक्चुअली द फंडामेंटल इक्वेशन ऑफ मैकेनिक्स एंड द नंबर ऑफ इक्वेशन हेयर इज फोर फॉर म्यू इक्वल टू वन म्यू इक्वल टू टू एंड म्यू इक्वल टू थ्री म्यू इक्वल टू फोर ओके देर आर फोर इक्वेशन दिस इज नॉट ए सिंगल इक्वेशन इन फैक्ट दिस फर्स्ट थ्री इक्वेशन आर सिंपली द न्यूटोनियन इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन यू कैन से बट द फोर्थ इक्वेशन एज जस्ट यू हैव सीन रिप्रेजेंट द एनर्जी कंजर्वेशन प्रिंसिपल एंड वी सिंपली से दैट दिस इक्वेशन which is defined here in equation 13 or you have also defined this equation in the uh, in first equation from the in the beginning of this lecture this is actually called the fundamental equations of mechanics in the covariant vector form if uh, a question is asked in uh, your examination as a objective question ki what is the covariant uh, four vector form of equation of motion you have to write this expression when you say covariant form it means uh, the form of this equation will remain invariant under the lorentz transformation okay now as a in the very beginning of this lecture i have told you that the concept of force in Newtonian mechanics or classical mechanics and the concept of force in uh, relativistic mechanics are entirely different they are not identical we have just seen that in newtonian mechanics force is always in the direction of acceleration but here you have seen that force is not always in the direction of acceleration it will be in the direction of acceleration only when the acceleration vector and the velocity vector if both of these two vectors are in same direction only then force will be in the direction of acceleration but if your acceleration vector makes some non zero angle with velocity then force and acceleration will be in different direction in a newton in a relativistic mechanics again there is also a very remarkable difference in newtonian mechanics if you find the force acting on a particle in two inertial frames the force will remain same if both frames are uh, inertial but they are in relative motion with respect to one another then force acting on a particle does not change they remain uh, they remain same both in magnitude and direction but in relativistic mechanics if you are talking about the force acting on a particle in two inertial frames which are in relative motion then you will see that the magnitude of the force and direction of the force in two inertial systems are not same so this is a very remarkable difference between the concept of force in relativistic mechanics and in the newtonian mechanics okay so we simply say that force has not any absolute meaning in relativistic mechanics as it has a, an absolute meaning in newtonian classical mechanics okay so this is uh, just our uh, the end of our lecture and i hope uh, you have definitely enjoyed this lecture and uh, if you have enjoyed write down this uh, lecture in your notebook this will be a just a good note some uh, viewers uh, ask me to provide the pdf of these lectures you can see all these lectures are already in pdf form you can watch the video and you can write and down the each and every calculations and languages in your notebook that will be a very good assignment that will be a very good class notes and you can write these things directly in your examination either in the competitive examinations like civil services physics optional or in your university examination okay so thank you very much